Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. My name is Davy Liu, and uh, I don't have a very uh, inspirational childhood, unfortunately. I uh, wish I could have a better story, but I'm a CEO in the Los Angeles animation studio called Can Do Films, and our value is living your dream and create to inspire. But not very inspirational childhood because I grew up in Taiwan, and you know typical Chinese, straight A, good grades. Well, I wasn't. I was extremely opposite. So <laughs> my parents was very hectic. You know, I have four older sisters, one amazing brother. So, you know, always have a yardstick measure that I couldn't measure up. So, but I was a boy though. I loved to draw. But as a kid in Taiwan drawing, the teacher would throw chocks at you in the classroom, you know, and you wake up and the teacher says, you know what, if you keep drawing, you're gonna starve. Because in Taiwan, I always hear, you gotta get a good education so you can get a steady job. Well, my grades were so bad, my mom shipped me into America in 1982. <laughs> well, the middle school looks more like Africa. <laughs> I've never seen a black dude before. I only saw it in Taiwan's toothpaste. But these black dudes have never seen a Chinese guy. They see me, they think I'm related to Bruce Lee. <laughs> so every day, they would ask me, hey, you know Bruce Lee? Hey, you know karate? My mom says, if you can't understand English, just say yes. So everything was yes. Do you know Bruce Lee? Yes. You know karate? Yes. You know. So then they asked me, what color is your belt? What color is my belt? I looked at it. Well, every time when these kids only wear black in junior high, you know. So I answered black belt. <laughs> then they asked me, how, what degree is your black belt? Maybe they were asking me how many holes punch on my belt. So I counted. I say eight degree. So. <laughs> And here I am, Davey Lewis, nickname became Bruce Lee. Um, I met my angels in my uh, first year in America as my art teacher. She told me that you can do anything you like. Because in Taiwan, I only face like a you know, testing paper. In America, she gave me a piece of white paper. She said, draw whatever you like. So I drew a dragon. And before I knew it, it won top 20 in the whole United States. Because she told me, Davey, you can do it. So that's where my can-do film comes from, can-do. Every child is a can-do child. I drew this dragon, and it won top 20 in the whole United States, you know. And uh, I hated Africa, so I put the Africa's flag in the tail of the dragon. So. <laughs> I even got a letter from Reagan, of course, it's a Xerox copy from White House. Congratulations, Mr. Little Davy Lou. And my parents said, wow, this kid was a loser. He never got a call from the principal. Now he even got a you know, welcome letter from the United States of America. So that's how I'll, I started my career. Um, I love drawings. I, I admire uh, classical art, Michelangelo being my hero. When I was, when I was 14, everybody's looking, you know, learning the, uh, the Mac computer. I was learning how to draw. And my mom thought I was looking at pornography. So um, <laughs> I went to school, studied classical art, and I majored in illustrations. Timing is everything. 1988, Little Mermaid came, Disney made millions, and they were looking for animators, and they came to take me, and of course, all my students, as my friends, my teacher says, you can't make it. They only make, they only find eight animators a year. So I got in in 1990 uh, into this Walt Disney company. Um, as you can see, I'm the only rare Asian in there. Uh, in this world, though, uh, I would say it changed my life because I never thought about animation could be a uh, brand. So being that uh, creative environment, um, my, um, uh, my world was surrounded with just very talented artists, uh, a lot of uh, people that I call myself, uh, my teacher, my mentor. Um, of course, first film, 1990, I worked on this film, Beauty and the Beast. It's the first animated film ever nominated for Best Picture. So, and then the second film was a uh, Middle East legendary story, uh, The Lavin. Uh, so here you work in a company, right? And every film you're doing, it is challenging and it's always come up with something original. And how can you outdo yourself? When you have a film nominated for best pictures and now you have a film Aladdin made 300 millions. And then us as a team, pre-production we call it, we develop projects for Disney. And very small group of people, like five to 15 people, would have an idea that, wow, okay, we have a French culture, now we have Indian culture, and then what do we do now? You know, we gotta bring something original, you know? 
So we had an idea of this father, you know, and this legendary story happened in Africa about this father being majestic, and he carried his troop in this Africa with, you know, with his um, son. And, but we went to Africa, like, well, you know, ideas got to sell. Because in Disney, we're not about making cartoons. As you know, Disney it is not about making theme parks. We're about making the merchandise and, of course, toys and the kids and the diaper that your, you know, your children wear. We're about making stories that inspire products. So for us as Disney, basically you're looking at they invest in the most expensive advertising in a film. So here we have ideas, but if idea doesn't sell, we're going to have a problem. Doesn't matter how great of a story, but if idea doesn't sell. So we have to sell our idea to the big CEO in Mickey Mouse uh, Kingdom. So we noticed Beauty and the Beast, the best thing that sold wasn't the people or the monster, it was the cup, the talking cup. So we went back to the studio, um, say, okay, we're going to take a trip to Africa. We went to Africa, did a research. We didn't see lots of big black dudes running around with spears anymore, but we saw animals. And we thought, what a great idea, man. But nothing very inspirational, right? We saw, like, the tallest thing was the tree. You know, there's not like the Great Walls of China or like, you know, big old Paris, you know, the, the Louvre. But we saw lions. And then us core team here, you know, arguing in the tent with the fly flying around, going like, hey, what if we make a call right now to the marketing place? Says, what if we turn the dad into a lion and turn his son to Simba? What if? And the marketing team says, ching, 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 ching. We hear money coming down. <laughs> so they call the CEO and everybody CFO. They call cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. How do you outdo yourself every time? Now remember, Lion King was considered a C film, meaning a low budget, because A film is 100 millions for Beauty and the Beast, 80 million for Aladdin. Lion King, eh? It's one of those, you know, cheesy rookie films, right? Then, of course, during the development, we had story structures. We need voices. You know, we need good actors' voice. We didn't really have a big budget for big actors. And we hired a couple of this old-fashioned, you know, his name wasn't Sir then. It was just Elton John in the 70s. Nobody forgotten who he is. You know, then we hired this nobody, you know, composers. And they came together, and they brought magic. They brought magic. It inspired us to create the character that we took pictures of when we visit in Africa. And we start doing all these little stink, you know, stick figures and come home and all this process of two years of developing a potential film called The Lion King. So through months and months, pouring probably 20 some million dollars in developing this potential a film that can be a big blockbuster hit. So we came home with about five, six artists and still developing, creating, and then right behind us is a huge team of people that's gonna fulfill our design and our visions. So as you can see, some of these production work of how things are made uh, behind the Magic Kingdom. So the process of three years of development, eventually the final year, we call it the productions, and the film was born. Nobody knows if it's going to be a hit because it's kind of hard to outdo Beating the Beast, right? Hard, hard, hard to do, overdo the uh, Robin Williams. Then the team celebrate the opening of the film. And this film have outdid itself in the box office and the Academy Awards. And this film merchandise went gazillion to the roof. It bought Walt Disney the entire animation studio that you see now in Burbank and even produce a Hollywood, New York musical, Broadway, that is outdid any single musical Broadway. This film came out, it took 60 million to make 20 years ago. Today currently has created and generated 9.6 billion in revenue. <laughs> Who would know? Who would know? So doing development of Mulan, you know, being the pre-production design, uh, I include my image into the, one of the characters. 
So, <laughs> self-serve, right? Got to make your mark when you're there, so. <laughs> All these years goes by, and you're thinking, you know, in Mulan, same thing. The star, it wasn't Mulan. It was the Little Dragons. And our creativity takes a new turn every time. So animation become a big, booming animation. All the studio warners, you know, they were hiring people left and right. Everybody wants to do animation. So I went and worked on a couple of these films over there. And then, you know, after that, I went back to Disney. Then went back to my dream jobs, you know. They say work for George is pretty cool. So I went over there, worked on Star Wars. And then, 10 years gone by, I'm going like, OK, here's Davy Lou, never made a straight A, but he could draw straight lines. What is he going to do? Who's Davy's going to be? Is he going to be working for Star Wars Episode 1 to 101, or is he keep working on Lion King until Simba grows you know, Alzheimer's? Or, I mean, what is Davy Lou's going to be? What is my story, I was thinking? You know? Here I am creating branding and stories for the biggest you know, kids Magic, Magic Kingdom. Who am I going to be? Year 2000, I, my rep in New York got me a deal. I became a, the most a creative illustrator because I was a workaholic. Daytime, I was working for Disney. At night, I was doing illustrations. I created this really cool um, style that I, I did. Um, I became the original anim, uh, illustrator at year, year 2000. And then that answers my questions. Is Davies going to be nobody if he leaves Magic Kingdom? So. That allows me to leave and start doing illustration for Time magazines. These are some of the images you see here. This is called Time is Running Out. I did a medical section for a long time in Time's magazine for these uh, illustration spots because medical uh, article is kind of boring, so you kind of want to do something creative and fun. And then one day I saw my mom. My mom says, so why would you quit a steady job? And I thought, you know what? When I was in America, I noticed the education system to taught me not to live to be a manufactured cow, but to think like a cowboy. I remember growing up is all you got to do is get a job. But then I realized, you know what? To get a job is not as important as finding your dreams. And I know that all my life I live for, it's dreaming about doing something I'm passionate about. I couldn't do a job just because it pays my bill. I got to know every day I wake up, I'm doing, doing something that I believe in. So what is that going to be? Um, am I going to live as a manufacturer person, or am I going to live as a creative person? So even thought that I you know, work for Disney and all these IPs, what about what IP am I going to create? And then what am I going to do? Live in Disney, have a nice 401k? Am I going to leave this world with my money, or maybe I could leave a legacy? So I took a leap of faith, left uh, Hollywood's uh, luxurious life. I thought about my life as a cup. What is that cup going to be? Am I going to create something that's inspirational? So I sat down, um, as usual, felt like I did. 2004, I started this Kendu Films studio with a few guys. And we got together and uh, created some of the stories. Uh, some of these stories are in books, um, books forms. Um, I'm going to share one of the stories that I love so dear, which is the top toy seller uh, in the Toys R Us. It's about this Kendu. This is our uh, company uh, name, Kendu. Kendu had a dream of a giant leaf, and in this leaf, he was free and he was happy. But in his real life, he was a slave. The Kendu took a giant leaf of faith, left the dinosaur's protections, and to look for his giant leaf. During his Journey, he met other friends that has this dream of giant leaf. And he, when he found, discovered the giant leaf, eventually he found a giant leaf was Noah's Ark. So these are the animated film that we're about to produce into a film. This has been a long time coming in planning. And um, uh, if you might uh, bring me the, the books and can do's. And, uh, so these are a company brand. You know, One thing is, how do you outdo yourself? And now, how do you do something that is extraordinary? That is not duplicating what you have done in what I did in Disney. But at the same time, you know, we were, how can we create a brand um, that is um, a Kendu brand for us? Because we believe every child is a Kendu child. So this is our upcoming uh, animated film, Kendu Films. This is a Kendu's uh, uh, little cute little Kendu here. 
And then uh, our journey keeps going because uh, I live in uh, Los Angeles. A lot of children's there. They have uh, kids' camps, so they do a lot of uh, musicals and uh, our books. Remember, I used to hate books. Now I'm writing books. Isn't that bizarre? Um, even my books right now is in China, Chinese and English in Taiwan. Um, I do animation uh, conventions there, uh, do book signings and speak about creativity and talk about how you know, every child can be great. And um, even uh, the coming up theme park potentially in China, in Hangzhou. And then give a whole new meaning to sleep. Kids hate to go to bed. Now we have a creative way to solve a problem where kids can go to bed. What can do pillow that speaks and sings to them to bed so, so they can dream. Give a whole new meaning to the way they hide themselves in the giant leaf. So. so what did I learn in this life? I think my teacher had left, left a real good legacy. She's still alive, thank God. 40 years, she said. All her 40 years, she taught her greatest gain wasn't her retirement. It was to inspire a child from a marble to a diamond. I think she taught me a great lesson that in life it's not about that money. It's about something you do and that you believe so much that you would die for and you would live every day trying. When I look back now, I would never regret for the choices I made of leaving Disney, the great secure jobs, and doing something that I love so dearly and do it with all of my heart and do it simply because that's who God made me to be, to be a diamond, to be a cowboy, to be an inspirational to my people, to many children that they think they can't make straight A, it's the end of the world, but that they can do some, something greater than their make, maker had made them to be. So when I finish I speaking, I always want everyone to recite all this word with me. I don't, know, I don't care really what department you're in. You may still have low self-esteem issue like me. We need to be reminded by my teacher, and we need to speak that to in the core of our heart. Life has many challenges. How do we outdo ourselves? And as a team, I want everybody to say this together with me. Ready? I can do it. You can do it. We can do it. Shall we say three things? Ready? I can do it. You can do it. We can do it. Thank you. My name is Davey Lou.